This episode is brought to you by That Gosh Darn Hippie Show. Featuring music from the days of vinyl, it's the grooviest thing to hear on your radio. Phantom of the Opera fans, like any decent-sized fandom, agree on absolutely nothing, but one complaint that is near-universal is the fact that there's never really been a faithful adaptation of the original novel. Film and stage versions tend to range from mostly accurate, but differing on some significant points, to not even close, but pretty good on its own terms, to what even is this? I think that's because Phantom is kind of a hard book to adapt. Okay, diva, I hear you, the audience at home, saying, you just admitted it has a shit ton of adaptations, so explain yourself. I mean that the way the original novel is written presents certain challenges when adapting it for a dramatic medium, causing most versions to stray a little, or a lot, off the primary text. To understand why, let's have a look at The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston Leroux. There are two things you should know about LaRue going in. The first is that his background was as a court reporter, theater critic, and journalist. Basically, a lot of focus on objectivity. The second is that Phantom's horror, gothic romance aspects are kind of outliers. LaRue's main stock in trade was mystery, particularly those featuring Joseph Roulette Labille, a detective kind of similar in aspect to Sherlock Holmes. So here's how it originally went down. LaRue frames his narrative by describing it as the true story behind some mysterious events at the Paris Opera House some 30 years earlier. At this time, Messieurs Richard and Montcharmon took over management of the opera from Messieurs Debian and Poligny, and soon discovered a lot of weird stuff happening. Demands for money in private boxes, dead stagehands, falling chandeliers, which the staff and former managers attribute to the opera's resident ghost. Meanwhile, Ralph, le Vicomte de Chaunier, seeks to resume his childhood relationship with Christine Daillé, an upcoming star at the opera, but is hampered by more weird stuff. Disembodied voices, Christine going missing for long periods and vanishing from her dressing room, which Christine and her guardian, Mama Valerius, attribute to Christine's supernatural voice teacher, the Angel of Music. Eventually, Christine takes Raoul to the roof of the opera and explains that all the weird stuff is the doing of Eric, a remarkably talented but hideously deformed man who lives in the opera cellars and is, literally, insanely in love with Christine. Christine's own feelings are, well, complicated, but she realizes hanging around Eric's crazy can't be good for anyone concerned, and she and Raoul agree to elope, defying both Eric and Raoul's older brother Philippe, who is not hot on the whole marrying below your station thing. Unfortunately, Eric overhears the whole thing, kidnaps Christine during the next evening's performance, and forces her to choose between marrying him or blowing up the opera house and everyone in it. Raul attempts to come to the rescue with the aid of a mysterious man known only as the Persian, but they end up trapped in a torture chamber, so that doesn't help. In the end, Christine agrees to be Eric's wife, and Eric, moved by the depth of her selflessness and compassion, releases her and Raul to pursue their happiness together. Christine and Raul elope to Scandinavia, Eric dies of a broken heart shortly thereafter, and LaRue expresses sympathy for a man who should have been celebrated for his talents, but instead was ostracized for his ugliness. Phantom is one of those stories where the central reveal is so commonly known that nobody treats it as a reveal anymore. Just as Dracula being a vampire or Jekyll and Hyde being the same person were originally major plot twists, the Phantom turning out to be an ugly renaissance man pulling the proto-example of your typical Scooby-Doo plot isn't revealed until around halfway through the novel. This means that our point-of-view characters are mostly the ones who have no idea what's going on, namely Raoul and the managers, with a huge assist from the Persian in the climax. As a result, not only do we spend a lot of time with the less interesting characters in the story, but also some of the most memorable scenes, like Christine's first sojourn in Eric's underground home, are related after the fact to people who weren't even there. And while you can make that work in a book, it's not really the best option for dramatic storytelling. With that in mind, it's pretty easy to see why most adaptations switch focus to the characters who capture the imagination most, Eric and Christine. Because of this perspective shift, a lot of secondary characters and incidents tend to get dropped by the wayside. The Persian is the one most commonly cited, 
And yes, like every supporting minority character charged with babysitting a hapless white protagonist, he deserves all the love and credit he can get. But other characters usually lost in adaptation include Philippe, Mama Valerius, investigating authorities, Mere Freud and Foray, assorted opera staff, and pretty much all the ballet dancers except Meg Giri. Carlotta, on the other hand, tends to have her role expanded because the over-the-top egotistical star trope makes for good comedy, and probably also makes Eric's determination to replace her with Christine more relatable. And that's probably the main reason why adaptations tend to go in such wildly different directions. In the end, they really want to get inside the title character's head more. LaRue gives us a rough idea of what made Eric the way he is, but really, the motivations and backstory of a tragic monster, especially one ultimately capable of selflessness, that makes for some really good drama, especially when the setting practically demands you set it to music. This is-